Hello guys, welcome back to the next video. And it seems you all enjoyed looking at the Cavalex Class 56s last time, which uh, seemed to go down a treat. So thank you very much for all your comments and likes and all that rubbish. <laughs> uh, but it's about time we move on to more layout work. Now, those of you that have been following my layout build for quite some time will probably have realized or seen before that I have a lift out section on my board. And it is in fact a hinged board, as you can see in the background. Now, this is a Tim Horn hinge board as uh, most of the layout is Tim Tim Hall, in fact, apart from the incline board over the back and just a little bit across the front underneath. Uh, most of it, as I say, is all Tim Horn, including this. Uh, I wanted a hinge board because it's quite a heavy bit of kit to be carting in and out all the time. So it's as simple as come in the door and this is up and then just put it down when you want to play trains. So really handy. Of course, it's handy for when my friends come around. So if someone turns up, I just quickly stop the trains, unbolt it, flip it up, they come in, and then you chuck it back down again. So it's a great bit of kit. However, um, it does pose a problem in the fact that you've got to be very careful what you do scenery-wise. Now, I have obviously left this blank for quite some time, as you've probably noticed in the uh, video for doing the, Crip the Cripsy Brook steam shed you would have seen that i fitted the new bit of track that goes around the curve and it's actually on that board so it comes out of the depot here there's just this little tiny stubber track here and then it comes round in an arc and then it joins onto the branch line and that's the board that it all joins onto so that complicated bit of track has to come in and out so that's why it took a lot of fiddling but um i've never really seen it it's always just been bare baseboards now is the time to sort that out because we've got a nice bit of scenery on the brake spear board there, the extension. And then this scenery is all gone in, apart from the back corner where there is a plan for, and I'm waiting on Steve from Railway Laser Lines for that, so that should be cool. Uh, that's a future video. But uh, the rest of it, I want to basically have a continuous loop of scenery eventually. I don't obviously have a fiddle yard on the layout. Uh, I want to be able to put a camera on the front of a train, which I have got this little guy just show you now so this is a polaroid cube camera which i nicked from james including the warwell wagon all i did is put some metal wheels on the warwell and uh, i've cut the front off so that the front isn't seen on the video so i want to be able to run this all the way around the layout and have continuous scenery the whole way so it looks like you're actually doing a journey rather than you suddenly go for a bridge and there's a massive blank bit of baseboard with loads of trains piled up everywhere. I don't run my, my trains that often, but when I do, I want them to look nice and have plenty of photographic opportunities. So that's why I never went for a fiddle yard. I don't mind putting stuff on and off. It's not the end of the world. So this is the main um, piece left. We've got the lift out section. Now I have had an idea and quite some time ago, I did think about potentially doing a part of a disused station on this little board here. So where the branch line, you had the two tracks coming out. I wanted a disused station, just sort of half relief. But then um, the more I thought about it, the more I thought it's not really going to work because you have that station sort of finish halfway because that board then bolts onto the side of Harefield. So it's basically going to finish and have a brick wall, if you like, um, and then the station won't carry on. So it's going to look silly. So instead, the new idea is... I'm actually going to build that disused station still, but I'm going to do it on the hinge board. So it is going to be a permanent piece in here. It's not going to be something that goes to shows one day. Um, but I've got to be very careful with how I build it. And that is because of when you lift the board up, obviously it sandwiches the scenery. What you do um, to stop the track getting squashed, because obviously the track is raised up, is you actually raise the hinges to at least the same height as the track and then the board sort of hinges away from itself and sits like that so all i've done now is i've actually raised the hinges more so the hinges actually happen to be 15 mil off the baseboard and 15 mil happens to be the bang on height for tube train platforms if you're not using a um a layer of cork or underlay which i don't so it all works out perfect for me i've just broke something under my arm <laughs> so yeah anyway let's stop rambling on we'll get the uh cutter out get some plywood on the go and uh get busy you would have seen previously i think that's the idea was that of course we've got the end of the road here 
is meant to join on with the road here. Now, what I made previously was in two halves, we had that piece, and then we had this piece. And the whole idea of this is that you would put these in place when you were running the railway, and then when you wanted to lift the lift out board up to get out, you would just take them off, uh, and I would basically just try and make them match up as best I could. However, obviously, as you can see, I wanted a scenic rope here, so I bring the road out, which meant that I then needed a third piece to go in here, and it just all got a bit silly. It got me thinking, what I should do is change this and actually have it all with one piece. So one section for all of this, that would make it a lot easier. You would just take it all out in one go, it would slot in in one go, and um, I can make the road a little bit wider then as well, because this of course has gained some width, and I can, instead of using 10 tonne of retaining walls, I can have a small bit of embankment here, and then obviously the bridge will be staggered. So you have this bridge piece here and the next one will be over here on this board. And it all just works a bit nicer. So if you couldn't tell the top one is like a curved bit like that that goes in that corner. Um, so yeah, we're taking them bits away. I went to Block and Quail and got a, another sheet of five mil, which is here, as you can tell. It's long enough to do the whole length in one go. It's about, I'd say about two, three centimeters longer than I actually need, so it's perfect. It's plenty wide enough. So what I need to do is I actually need to bring, bring it in line with the edge of the road around here, join it up with this piece so there's no gap. And then I've basically got to draw a road on that curves across and matches up with it all, as well as put the curve in up here. So it's gonna be a bit of a nightmare to work it all out. But I just thought I'd show you the sort of idea of what I'm doing before I do it, because this is gonna take some uh, to and and throw in, cutting, recutting, measuring, uh, measuring once, cutting three or four times probably. <laughs> so I thought I'd do this bit off camera. So I'm gonna start drawing stuff out now, have a measure up, and then basically I'll chop this out and then we'll come back with the camera. Right, the road section is now sort of fitting quite nicely. I'm pretty pleased with it. As you can see, it fits around this section lovely. I've done a bit of sanding just to get this as smooth as I can. A bit of filler will sort that out eventually. Um, it does come down just slightly below the level of this piece, which is good because by the time you add paint, it will sort of even out. Uh, the only problem with this is it is going to be a drop-in section, so I need to probably put some weight in it so that when it drops in, it doesn't really move about uh, and it stays solidly down because you can sort of just push it a little bit because I can't really think of a way to lock it in place when it's in uh, other than really, really strong magnets, and uh, I'm not sure where I'm going to get those. I'll have to have a good look, but... Anyway, it's in uh, at the minute, just resting in there, and I've got this massive lead weight holding this side down because this side likes to sit just slightly upwards. And the reason I've got that in is because I've just glued these two retaining walls in with uh, wood glue, and uh, I want them obviously to stay in place until it's all dry, and then the whole lot should come out in one piece. So I have used some little 15 mil pine sections just to space the walls up the right amount so they match this side. And of course, uh, where the gaps are, I will fill those after. Um, this is just a drop of wires going from one track to that little corner section in there just because I fancy cheating because I couldn't be bothered. So uh, they'll be covered up anyway with ballast and stuff so that won't matter. Uh, and yeah, obviously I'll do something in the center there. But yeah, that's gonna be how it looks on that curve. So obviously it gives us a nice bit of space. You can see there the general sort of idea. Put your room down to the track and obviously it opens up and then we're gonna have the girder sections along there. So obviously I've got to leave this a little while until that dries. I've only just done it now. So probably have to leave that in there a good hour or two. So it does mean that I'm unfortunately now trapped in. <laughs> so I better start thinking of something else I can do in the meantime. Uh, and on that note, I may begin making up the girders for that side. So just while this is drying, obviously these retaining walls are low relief, so they don't have any brickwork on the back. So I had this um, spare little offcut. I've put a score in where I want the uh, angle to be on the back and just bent it like that. I've chucked a load of super glue over the backs of them and I'm just gonna put this in place because it's tall enough and long enough. 
and then uh, once it's all dry I'll go around it with a really sharp Stanley blade and just cut um, using the retaining walls as a template basically so that just gives me some uh, detail on the back so uh, that's the current plan whether that actually works or not if I just stick the camera there see how well this goes probably not very got to try and get that in the right place about there pretty much just force that in place like so and then just try and make sure it's touching the walls everywhere and then uh, hopefully the glue will set and as i say i'll be able to cut around it but um, yeah basically a brand new blade i've got one of these little small knives and i'll just sort of go along like so without chopping my fingers off although i've got 10 attempts some of you might have nine some 11 but hey ho <laughs> depends where you live <laughs> But that's going to be the idea, is basically I'm going to do this. Hopefully that will work out and it will look lovely. Probably not. So I'm trying to get this piece to locate properly. And uh, I've now attached two overhangs to the uh, road section. And on the other side, I've cut this slot that you can see. So another piece is going to go in there. Wow! Because my thinking now is if I do this properly, I can be able to remove the road section and have this flat piece where I can mess about if I quickly need to work on something, for example. So I can take this whole section off and have like this little sort of shelf for doing stuff. So if I just chuck that down there, just so it's not, I'll be, so I'll be able to get it in because it's taller, of course. If I put this in, you've got to get it sort of, sort of in line, and then it should push it down into place, like that. You see, we've got the two overhangs there, so they stop it pushing that way. If I uh, put the bolt in, that would help. There we go. Stop that moving. And then, uh, yeah, so this one is the one that I just showed you with the slot. If I push that up from underneath, it will sit about there. And uh, that should have enough of an overlap to stop any more movement. So it should be nice and snug. The only thing left to do then is this end to keep that all in place. But that should work pretty nice. So I'm going to screw this into here. And then, uh, of course, once this is all done and it's, it's snug enough, uh, then I can look at fitting the uh, polystyrene embankment. A little more progress then, aside from making a massive mess. The foam is glued down. I've sprayed a rough tarmac-ish colour on the road base, just so I can get an idea how it's going to look. Obviously, it's a bit of a mess in here right now, so take it with a pinch of salt. I have glued down these bits of paving, so I'm thinking this is going to be a single lane and to make it look a bit different i'm going to have a set of traffic lights so vehicles say say we've got that bus coming through there on a green traffic light this is where the traffic light coming the other way is going to be so he'll wait there and then the bus obviously will pass and then the van will bugger off into the distance and then we'll do the same up this end so it will probably wait around here somewhere that would probably be about right for what I want to do. It just means that I've got an excuse to fit some traffic lights somewhere because I think it will be a cool looking thing. And um, if I do go ahead and fit the Weissman car system, the car motion, uh, you can set that up to work with traffic lights, I believe, with magnets and stuff. So you can set, a, set them to stop at a certain location and stuff. So that should be good fun. Um, I got this uh, little wall in down here. So I just did that as like a retaining wall just to bring the height up a little bit because it gets a little bit thin here. I didn't want it to go right down to baseboard level because it might look a bit too steep. So I thought I put that little retaining wall in. We can build the surface up to there. And then from here onwards, we'll have three of the retaining wall arches that we've got over there. So I'll do a little order from L cut and then, a, and then another arch each for the main lines the main lines or just for the tracks whatever same as this side is set up so two arches and then maybe something in the middle depending 
Uh, over here, I have done a little sort of piece that goes on here. I can't actually find it right now. Where have I put it? God knows. <laughs> oh, there it is. So this little bit here, I've got it upside down. I mean. So that will sit there to retain that embankment. However, I'm gonna glue this in situ, so this won't come out with the road. This will stay in place with the embankment. I think it'll be easier. It will mean that I'm gonna have a slight gap down the back there, but I'm not really bothered. Um, it should look fine. So what I need to do now anyway, is get some, uh, what's it called, plaster bandage. So I need to do a trip to Hobbycraft. I need to plaster bandage that all up. And uh, I also need to blend in this top section where it's got this little lip and that should be good to go. Uh, handily, I did leave an overhang where I screwed in the uh, piece of wood that holds this sort of up, the vertical piece. There's a lip underneath. So it means that this can sit over the top of the embankment. So I think I'm gonna chamfer off the edge so it leads in nice and that should help with that. Right, I've been to B&Q and bought some more wood. So this is 15 mil by six mil strip wood. Now I'm gonna get a bit clever with this, might not work out, we'll see. <laughs> this is um, 15 mil by, I think it's 30, 35, something like that. Anyway, it's quite wide. So as I mentioned at the start of the video, I think 15 mil is the base height that I made these platforms with. Uh, so this is going to be the right height for tube platforms, but because this is all curved It's gonna be a very awkward long sweeping platform So I need to get a long sweeping curve in there and I want to do this as a brick platform Because the other two stations use concrete as you can see there uh, So I want to do something a little bit different a bit more older looking so it's gonna sweep around there uh, I'm gonna make the base platform sides just out of this strip wood and then I'm basically gonna line that with brick sheet. So you can see I've been to Anthony uh, at AGR shop and picked up some sheets. I've got uh, I've got a spare brick sheet. I've got another one here somewhere lying about that I can use. I got a corrugated iron sheet for the uh, engine shed on Cripsy Brook. And I've got a couple of these paving sheets. I think I've got a spare one somewhere. And then a couple of these um, just bits of plastic card sheet. So the idea is I'm gonna use this as the platform face. So if we can put, wang that in there, you can see it's quite bendy. So I wanna bend this around to form the platform face. So that will stand upright. This is the same height as it being 15 as well. So what I'll do is I'll use sections of this and I will basically work it out where I screw this to the baseboard and then I screw that to this piece in sections. So that then holds this in its shape. And that's my theory. <laughs> the back of the platform can be pretty much flat, to be honest, it doesn't actually matter. So we've got to fill in here up to here, and then we'll use this as a part of the platform as well, because it's the right height. All we'll have is a hinge exposed, which I'm not bothered about. Um, and then as I say, we'll infill with the wider piece. So it's just getting the curve is gonna be a nightmare. I think I'll get a long wagon or something and then use a pen to draw around it to see where the arc of the wagon is as to where to put the platform face and we'll probably go from there. So I happen to have a Hattons RHTT wagon about. Oh no, RIP Hattons. <laughs> so I'm basically just gonna get a pen, put it next to the buffers and draw like so. So that should draw an arc. And then what we'll do is we'll take the line at its widest point and draw along it with a sharpie or something. So we've got a nice thick line. And then that will be the um, maximum width that the platform can stick out in theory. I might obviously go a couple mil more than that, just uh, in case, which I think would be a good idea. And then that hopefully should be the template that we follow. So I'm just looking now, it probably is a bit on the narrow side, so. Might try again, now that I can actually see what I'm doing and I'm not looking at the camera. That's better. So, uh, you can 
can see there we've got all these lines so again i'll just take the widest one and go with that and that hopefully should work so this curve is going to be the main priority and then obviously here it goes fairly straight anyway so that's not too much of a biggie i'm thinking of probably starting the platform around here somewhere because uh, i want it to be around three foot long so it's going to probably finish on that baseboard join so i think that'll be the easiest way so yeah we'll make the platform as long as that baseboard and then probably another half a foot if that so that should be good so here is the idea this is the first block in so this is just a five centimeter long section that i've chopped off that obviously it's 15 mil high as i say so it's the same height as this it's screwed in from underneath so, and uh, it's got wood glue as well so it'll be nice and strong and what that will allow me to do is then bend this round and you can see there that what i'll do is i'll keep adding them as i go and it'll give me a nice smooth arc for the platform edge obviously this screw i need to sort that out that's just a temporary one in there for now just so i can get this correct but that's going to work nicely so yeah that's going to gently curve around there and that'll give me my nice curved platform <laughs> car s stock out just to test and it actually fits so i must have got my measurements wrong with this baseboard it must actually be three foot long <laughs> so that's uh good news you can see there fits that end and fits that end as well obviously we've got a bit of a gap at the minute but that will be taken up with the platform top you'll never get around to this curve though it's model railway life so we're always going to have that gap there however obviously it's a disused platform doesn't really matter um I do, however, run the S-Stock as a five car normally. Well, that's the plan anyway, because I've got the extra coaches for it. So I don't know whether to add the extra bit of platform on or not. Um, I'm more inclined not to, to be honest with you, because I'm thinking, well, back in the day, this platform wouldn't have been as long, potentially, hence um, it running into disuse. So I might actually leave it as a four. I'm not sure. Um, I don't know, maybe extend it just slightly, just like half a car length or something like that just because I can, but I'm pretty happy with that anyway. So let me just get the extra fifth car out and we'll just see where it lands. And then there were five. <laughs> so we're in the same place and you can see there, it's not much, is it? So it's only got to come to there if I do it. Uh, I am tempted. I think I probably will do it just because it uh, bl will blend this hinge in a bit more and it'll probably look a bit nicer, especially considering this little section here is straight almost anyway. So it will only be a very gentle curve. So stuff it. Let's do it. So I'm going to make a start at the top now. So I'm going to start this end so that I've got a nice square edge there. Um, obviously, as I say, I will trim this down afterwards. So what we do is I can get this square with the baseboard and flush with the furthest hanging hanging out edge here which is here and then I'm going to hold it down and I'm going to cut along the platform edge the face then what I'll do is once I've cut that nice and flush I will move it forwards um, the amount that I want it to sit uh, and I'll bring the coaches in to see how much clearance I've got then I will cut the back and that should give me the perfect size hopefully so <laughs> wish me luck here because it might all go wrong uh, but if it does, you get to watch my disaster on camera. I think I'll start this end and probably work towards the camera, which is actually probably a bad idea. I'll end up cutting my fingers off. 
because I'll be doing it cack handed. So we'll go this side. Hopefully that will work. Get that there. That's that, that's good. Just gotta take your time, I guess. And uh, just be careful with your fingers because you only get one set. You get 10 attempts, so it's not all bad, but is it worth the risk? Just a bit of sandpaper. Run that along the edge. Right, okay. So, we'll have it there. We'll run these coaches in. So these are just my Mark 1 Pullmans. see a bit better what we want to do is just move it evenly so obviously i'll stay on that line that you can't see because it's out of frame <laughs> i'll stay on that line and i'll leave it flush with the edge of the baseboard this side as well and just sort of move it up a little more until i'm happy just to get that platform edge Which is going to be about there. So if I move these up here, then I'll bring the S lock in just to try that. But I think that's pretty good. I think that's about as good as it's going to get. So we'll go with that. What I should do is just double check it's even both sides really. Well saying that we know because it's flush with the baseboard and that line there which is the edge of the baseboard. So if we go for that then all I've got to do is try and cut down the back edge without disturbing it so we know it's in the right place. What I'll do is I'll get a pen uh, and I'll just mark it actually. I'll just mark the edge where it's flush with the baseboard. So I know how big the overhang has got to be. Just in case it moves, there you go. And then we'll basically do the same thing again, run down that side with the Stanley blade, and then with that side flush, when it's all cut, then we know we've got the right overhang this side. And then basically we'll just do the same again uh, as we go along onto this piece, this piece. Uh, and then I will get my Paving, which I've just got these little sheets here, and I'll basically use this as a template, and I will put this on top and glue it on top of that, and it will just get, make it a, a bit of a thicker sort of surface where you've got the bits in between with no wood. So I think that'd be the best way. The top's going on then, so you can see that shaping that plastic card has worked nicely. Here's the bit without the paving on top, just to show you basically what I'm doing. Um, and then I basically laid the brick, uh, the paving on top, sorry, glued it down and then trimmed it off after. This isn't glued down at the minute, it's just placed on top just to give you an idea. Uh, and now I've started to just put in the brick sheets along the side. So obviously I'm going to do those first because trying to get under there with a standing blade would be not impossible. So I'm just going to continue with the brick sheets on this piece. The back won't matter because there's going to be a small little embankment coming down so that this sort of continues on. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, obviously looking good and the two different layers if I find a piece that's got no support Which is there It doesn't depress too much. So I'm quite pleased with that. So I don't think we're gonna have any issues there uh, I've got to work out how far up here. I'm going of course, which I did look at earlier with the s stock in the five car five car formation So I'm gonna start to cut this out and uh, get the shape Ta-da! We have a platform. <laughs> I've got to finish painting it but that gives you the idea to start with. 
I painted the uh, rough sort of blue brick-ish colour on the base, uh, the side walls as you can see, and I have extended the platform here. So now, five car S stock. Fits in with room to spare. So if I ever do want to use it as a stock, then we have the option. But yeah, it's looking pretty good. You see the roads in now as well. So I've just got to finish that off. I've got some more paving to run along the uh, side, this side. Mess back with that. Once the paving's in, I can get the road texture in. I've got a bit of filler work to do. Um, and while the filler's out, the reason I taped off this edge is because I'm going to tape this side now and then the exposed edge I'm going to put some filler across there and then I'm going to sand it all flat uh, including um, putting some filler on the uh, hinge which as you can see I have in the end changed for the smaller one uh, and then uh, so yeah I'll filler that I'll filler the edges and then I'm going to scribe in the, sl the um, edging slabs and I'll paint the edge white as well um, and then I'll scribe in the slabs on the hinge as well. And of course I'll fill in this little bit and this little bit. And then that should look pretty good. And then down the back, obviously it's gonna be more polystyrene like this as a little small embankment down to the fast lines. And then in the middle, I can have a couple of trees and stuff on this end because this end won't interfere with anything when it flips over. And then that will disguise stuff coming out the main lines, which will make for a nice little viewing angle. So yeah, I'm really pleased with it. Um, I need to obviously get ballast on it soon as well. So that'd be nice to get sorted. Uh, and I've got to glue down the top level and then just decide what to do really to give it that disused rundown look. But yeah, it's all gone pretty well. So I'm uh, very pleased. I've painted the platform then. I've done it like a dirty concrete color. I've used the airbrush to put a few uh, bits of nastiness in there. It's looking all right. Um, I've also painted it with satin lacquer spray from Halfords, which is what I usually do. That will gloss because I want to come along and um, put some sort of mortar wash in there in between the paving slabs. You can see also the brick is all painted up. So that is the uh, combination of grey primer, satin black, and uh, it's a Ford blue colour. I can't remember exactly which one it is. And uh, I basically just lightly brushed, uh, lightly um, sprayed the three over to get the sort of grey slash blue colour that I want for blue brick. And then once you get the mortar wash in there, as you can see, it looks pretty good. Obviously, before you do the mortar wash, again, lacquer it. But yeah, uh, now that the brick's done, before I painted this, I obviously went and stuck it down. You can see I've got paint all over my hands still. Um, we've got it going around the hinge quite nicely there. So you can see the hinge is fairly, I don't, wouldn't say hidden, but... It's fairly well sort of blended in. What I think I'm going to do is when I've got the wash in for in between the pavement slabs, I think I'll come along with um, a steel roll and probably just score along to get the um, brick effect, get the tile effect, sorry, in the hinge, because that will help blend it in more. If I don't score it, then I'll probably just use a pen or something just to give it the lines. I think that'll look a bit better. But um, in any case, it hides it fairly well, doesn't it? I, th I think I'm fairly happy with it to be honest um but yeah it's looking pretty good so now that the lack is dried because i left it overnight i'm gonna as i say go and do the top now and uh, then we'll see what it looks like when it's done so it currently probably looks like i'm making a massive mess but what i'm actually doing is using a bit of a sort of dark gray combination of paint i'm painting inside the um sort of cuts in the paving to bring out the paving detail uh, and that just really sort of brings that extra level to it you can see i've got double o'neill playing in the background if you don't know who he is his name's tris he does some nice little videos he's very easy to watch i suppose uh it's always good to watch other channels especially while you are doing a bit of modeling yourself because it keeps you interested and motivated but yeah a little shout out for you to there tris keep up what you're doing mate so uh let's crack on and get this paint
not satisfying. So that's the disused station sorted for this video. Obviously plenty more to do still, but I'm super happy with how it's come along. And uh, as you saw at the end there, I've started working on a little entrance for it, which I probably will put a little gate in for the disused effect. Probably can't get it to stay there. There you go, actually. So that gives you the effect. Now, I do need to have a serious think about whether this stays as a disused station or not because of course there's no reason why it can't be used but I feel like the disused theme will look quite nice if not and we decide eventually just to use it as a stop on the branch line then of course we can um, make it just look very run down but enough so that it can still be in use sort of thing but for now I think it's uh, come on really well and uh, thank you all for watching and that's going to be the end of the video so hopefully you like it stick a train in just so you get the idea so yeah let me know what you think in the comments and uh whether you think we should do some more work to this in the next video or what else you would like to see as you can see i have gone and airbrushed it all as well and weathered it all up so it's all looking quite smart now we've got a lot still to do we've got to finish this road i've got this bit of embankment to sort out which needs to come out with the road um we've got to do the paving we've got to fill all the holes and sort the, the uh, road surface out Going to extend this bit of pavement across and then we're going to have more l-cut retaining walls three more along there and that's of course what the overbridge is going to sit on hence uh, it's just on that little lip there at the minute but of course that aids in hiding the bolt for the hinge section uh, but yeah it's going to look really good stack grass to go on there a couple trees as well as stack grass on this bit and then decide what i want to do in the back there but yeah um as for me thank you all for watching and i'll see you again next time Bye for now.